Shalom, which simply means peace be unto you. The most important person in my life is the Lord Elijah. And those who oppose anything that he says, of all my enemies, they are the worst. One thing have I desire of the Lord Elijah, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord Elijah, to behold the beauty and to inquire in his temple. We want to say how thankful we are for all the doors and all the persons that are locking into the House of Israel Bible class. We want to say a special thanks to you. We want to say how grateful we are getting a lot of calls. We are hearing from a lot of people. So that is great. It means that people are learning. I'm here to talk to you on the, on the subject of who will come. The reason I chose such a subject, it is because the world is guessing who will come to restore all things. What I want you to do is to count on Elijah. He is a sure individual. He's a person that feels our problems, that see what we're going through. One of the greatest witness of the Bible, who is Jesus, he talks extensively about Elijah and the work of Elijah, what he will do when he comes and all of this. But before we talk about Jesus, let us look at Malachi, the very last book of the Old Testament. And it says something here about Elijah that most of us have never taken notice of. It talks about the last days and who will come at this appointed time. The world today is looking for a savior. Some say that it's Jesus. Some say it's Mohammed. Some say it's John. But the world is guessing about who will come. You know, if God wanted us to be in the guessing game, he would say, someone will come. But the Bible it's clear evidence that it's Elijah who will come. I know today things are so terrible that everywhere you turn, people are talking about God. Talking about God. Who is going to see us through? But I'm here to tell you, don't give up. Trust Elijah. Let us turn over to the book of Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6. You see, something stunning is here. That we, we look at it. But sometimes, when we look at it, 
we really don't understand what it is saying. In the book of Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6, I want you to listen to what it says. And you know, whenever we, we, we read in, it is advisable our king taught us that we must have a dictionary. Because sometimes to get the true sense of what the scripture is saying, you might need to look up a few words to get a clearer picture and understanding of what the scripture is saying. I want, in the book of Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6, listen to what it says. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. No, no. This tells us something. It says that Elijah is the one that will come before what we would call Judgment Day. The great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, if it's Elijah who will come, then it's Elijah who this world must listen to. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah. In other words, God makes it clear who will come. And at what time he will come. When it's dreadful. He's the one that is coming before this day. He's the one that we will answer to. Look at it. You look at it very carefully because sometimes we, we just read the scriptures but we don't study them. Listen to the work of Elijah. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. No, no. What I want you to do is ask yourself. If Elijah has the power to give us a heart like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then there's nothing hard that Elijah cannot do. He has the power to turn things around. Give us a heart like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the hearts of the children to their fathers. But, but, but you see, you see, after you finish reading there, and you see the mighty work of Elijah. Listen to what the bottom of the verse says. And you will understand that Elijah is more than a prophet. Elijah must be God. Listen to what it says. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. No, no, no. I, I, I have done some extensive uh, research. I like to do words and meaning on the word smite. And the reason why I did this is because with all the trouble that we see in this world, people are afflicted. It is Elijah who has that power to afflict this world. Listen to the word, listen to what the word smite means. It says to afflict the population. In other words, Elijah has the authority, the power to afflict this whole world. That they may come to the understanding 
of who Elijah is. L -l Listen some more of what it says. It says to afflict, retributively, chastise. That, that's what the word smite means. To strike down. To slay. This is what the word smite means. That Elijah is saying that if this word fail to hearken, to understand who Elijah is, he said, I'm going to smite the earth with a curse. Now, Elijah has the power to smite the earth. And I want to show you what Jesus said about Elijah. The reason I want to show you this, you know, you know, Jesus is a great witness. The whole world trusts Jesus. They love Jesus. Jesus said, look what Jesus said. Turn with me to the book of St. Matthew. Just the, just the next book. St. Matthew 17, verse 10 and 11. Now, I want you to look at what Jesus said here. St. Matthew 17, verse 10 and 11. You see, you see, we got to pay keen attention to, to Jesus' word. Because if you love Jesus, You know, you know, love, love runs deep. It's a deep concern about an individual. In other words, whatever they say you want to do because you love them. Listen to what Jesus said. We, we just read in the book of Malachi that Elijah has the power to smite the earth with a curse. But I want you to listen to what Jesus said. In the book of St. Matthew 17, verse 10 and 11. Listen to what it says. And his disciples ask him, saying, This is Jesus' disciples. Why then say the scribes that Elijah must come? E L I A S is the Greek spelling of Elijah. And Jesus, this is verse 11. And Jesus answered and said, Elijah truly. Certainly, without a shadow of a doubt. He's telling you that Elijah will come. And what he will do? Elijah truly shall first come and restore all things. You see, you see, I respect Jesus. I love Jesus. Shall first come and restore all things. No, no. I want you to just stop and ask yourself a question. Who can restore all things but God? And our witness here. It's Jesus. So, so we, we shouldn't have any doubts. We shouldn't have any questions. Because this is directly from the mouth of Jesus. He said, Elijah, truly. 
shall first come and restore all things. Now, now, I want you to study more and more with the house of Israel. Because in Malachi, it shows that Elijah has the power to smite the earth with a curse. And in St. Matthew, Jesus is telling us that the same Elijah has the power to restore all things. Then we should take more time. Study Elijah. Because he's an individual that we can count on. He's sure to come. Sure to come. You know, you know, while, while I'm telling you that Elijah is sure to come. You see, you see, the reason why, why the house of Israel we study so hard and we look for all these information, it is because we, we don't want our people to be left in the dark. I, I was doing some extensive research and I, I like to go on the Catholic website, I like to go on all these different websites. And I went to a website that is called waterfordwhisperednews.com And there is an article where a spokesperson for the Vatican, for the Pope of Rome, the world that Jesus is not coming back. You see, you see, I, I, I pray that we, we don't offend you. But you will listen to what we're saying. You see, I, I want to put it up so that the, the camera can pick it up properly, you know. about Jesus. It, it is the spokesman for the Vatican, for the Pope of Rome. A spokesperson for the Vatican has officially announced today that the second coming of Jesus, the only Son of God, may not happen after all. Now, these are the people that, that you know, all of us sometimes was in these churches. These are the people that we trusted. Because you know the world say that the, the Pope he, he is in contact with God. He, he makes all the decisions for the churches on earth. But listen to what he's saying. A spokesperson for the Vatican has officially announced today that the second coming of Jesus, the only Son of God, may not happen now after all. But urge the followers to still continue with their faith regardless of the news. Cardinal Giorgio Salvador told the WWN that this year, the 1981st anniversary is to be the Vatican last in regard for waiting for the Lord to return to earth. I want you to listen. We just feel Jesus is not coming back by the looks of it. What I want you to do is, is write to the House of Israel for this article. We'll be very happy to give it to you. Because what these people have done All their life, they have lied to you. They have taught you willful lies. 
You know, and just when the world is fixing to say, oh yes, these are the end days, the last days, and Jesus would be coming. This comes as a shock to the world. That here is the Vatican spokesman telling the world that Jesus, that they waited for 2,000 years. After all, he's not coming anymore. I tell you, if, if I was in these churches and they would say this, they would fool me all my life. I would come out, just as God said in the book of Revelation 18 and 4. Come out of her! I want, I want to read some more. They said, nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus promised his disciples that he would come again in, chap in John 14, 1 to 3 of the Bible. There are many homes up where my father lives, and I'm going to prepare them for your coming. When everything is ready, then will I come and get you, so that you can always be with me where I am. If this weren't so, I would tell you plainly. The Vatican defends Jesus' broken promise, claiming he was probably drinking wine at the time when he made this comment. Disrespect! You, 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 see, you, see, you see what the churches have done to our people? Fooled you! Deceived you! For 2,000 years. That, that is why we've seen, we've seen the house of Israel, we don't go by what the church is saying. We don't go by this guessing game. But we tell you directly what is in the Bible. The Bible teach, Jesus say, that Elijah will come. And you know, you know the Bible talks, talks about this. It says that there will come a time when Elijah will mock them. He will tell them, call upon your gods. Call, let, 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 let us go to the book of um, First Kings. Let, let, us, let us read it. Let us read it. In the book of First Kings 18, and we, we want to stop there every time we on this journey, the, the clock is always talking to us. In the book of First Kings 18 and verse 21, I want you to listen to what the scriptures say. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? Well, we understand that you, 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 you trusted what they were saying. After the, the, the spokesperson has tell you that look, you Jesus is not coming. We should dig into the word and study what the Lord Elijah says. Listen to what it says. And Elijah came out to all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, in other words, if you believe these false prophets, he said, follow them. And from the words and the teachings of this Bible, we should understand that it's only Elijah is to come in these last days. 
Let, let us read some more. Then said Elijah unto all unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal prophets are 450. You know, when, when it talks uh, about Baal prophets, it's talking about all these teachers that are teaching these false doctrines. They plenty. Sometimes we, we, we don't look for truth. But just because the, the, the church is, is so fancy and the, and the way the pastor might talk, we believe what he's saying. But, but listen, listen, listen. Let us read on verse 26. And they took the bullock which was given to them and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning, evening until noon, say, you see, you see, this, this, this was at a time where, where the true God is going to prove himself. I want you to see what happened. That Elijah, sorry, saying, obey and hear us. But there was no voice. Not any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God, he is taking, he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or pre adventure, he is sleeping and must be awake. And they cried aloud and cut themselves. And after their, their, their manner with knives and lashes, their blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass, when midday was past, that they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regard. Verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near. And he repaired the altar of the Lord. If we look at the true way of worshiping God. Tonight, we can say, or today rather, that the true way of worshiping God has been broken down. And someone must come to restore And this is the work and the purpose of Elijah. That is why the house of Israel is talking to our people every Sunday. That they can understand that it's only in the house of Israel you can find the right way, the true way of worshiping God. L -l Listen to what the scripture said, verse 31. Verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, 
Israel shall be thy name. You see, God did not leave this thing up to us to be all over the place guessing which is the right way, who is the person that will come. But in this one verse, he tells us who will repair the altar of the Lord. In this one verse, he tells us that Israel is that true way of worshiping God. This is my advice to you. Don't worry where the church is. Because after 2,000 years of fooling you, I'm telling you that Jesus will not come. It is time that we trust the Lord Elijah. He's the one that has come. He's the one that has repaired the altar. And he said today that Israel shall be our name. Let us look for the Lord Elijah. Let us continue to trust him because he's a sure individual to come and restore all things. And with this, I'd like to thank you.